Big Three, but I just haven't seen it. Sure. Hi, everyone, and welcome to um, the e um, crafting your e perfect Evo. We're gonna go ahead and talk about week three, kind of give like an insider overview, and then we are gonna give you advice and go ahead and you start writing for week four. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me well. Um, we have quite uh, some of our moderators here, and we'll probably have others join us. So right now we're just going to uh, do like a quick hi, and then after we do the quick hi, we'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and we'll talk about the rest. So, um, so, Sophia, <laughs> and. Uh, I will, I'm going to be with you next week as well, so that would be great. Um, and then I'm going to pass it on to Andre to say a little hello, and then we'll uh, pass it on to Lindsay. And, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Lindsay, you want to go first? Or... Okay, sure, sure, no problem. I uh, wanted to say, first of all, um, hello, everybody. Uh, hi from uh, the south of Spain. This is Lindsay Clanfield. I'm actually uh, in my bed right now. I'm not in jail or anything. It looks like a kind of elegant jail gilded cage. But I'm in, uh, this is because uh, the router is right next to uh, the bed here. So that's why I'm here to get the good signal. Anyway, hello, everybody, and um, welcome to our latest Google uh, Plus Hangout for the um, Crafting Your Perfect e textbook course. Um, wanted to say thank you very much to Shelly and everyone else for having helped set this up. It's and thank you to all of you for all your amazing um, contributions so far. I've been uh, dipping in, uh, in and out during the week and leaving some comments on, on projects and stuff. Um, the first thing I wanted to say is that I've noticed I never knew there were so many tools for making mind maps. I knew like one or two, but I've discovered myself like another three or four. I don't know if the other moderators have noticed this as well. Loads of, ha of, of maps, uh, mind mapping uh, software that I didn't know about. That's great. Um, some very interesting things that I've seen, some kind of nice niche uh, ESP projects, other kinds of uh, projects as well. A lot of talk about uh, what's the best format to do this in, and a lot of discussion about that. And it seems from what I could see, this, the samples that I could see, people uh, tending towards the PDF option for its flexibility. I'll, you know, other people can kind of like... Uh, Q in here and, and say and say what they they want about that. Um, here's my view on PDFs. I do think, uh, having worked uh, with various ebook projects with various authors who had different visions, um, the PDF does seem to be at the moment one of the most flexible ones for doing different things uh, and for widespread distribution. Shelley, for example, is doing an e uh, book with us on um, uh, on the round. Uh, using PDF, and she's able to do all kinds of really creative linking within the book and sort of visual design aspects. Linking can be done through anything, really, but the visual design aspects she's done, I'm not sure how easy it would be to do in other other ebooks. So lots of you were asking about, okay, wh which would I use? iBooks Author is really good as well. Lots of people were talking about that, although that restricts you to the Apple ecosystem. Now, if you're happy and comfortable there and your students are as well, great. Um, one point that has been made a couple of times about iBooks author is that if you, uh, the, the sort of worry is, do, if I make something in iBooks and I can't have it anywhere else, um, that was originally the vague wording of Apple's user agreement, uh, just so that you all know that has changed. What you cannot use elsewhere would be the same design, but you could take the words and the content and use it elsewhere. So if you do something on iBooks author, you cannot then use that generated design the sort of layout, the PDFs that they lay out, and then we sell it elsewhere. But you could use the content anywhere else. They don't, they don't lay claim to the content. At least that was my understanding. Um, a few other people talking about other formats and so on. Um, the Kindle, and uh, lots of people mentioned my comment on the author frustrations uh, of doing everything in like stripped down format, no formatting, no design and then doing it afterwards once you see the tool you have available. Um, I can just tell you again, this happened just this week right now. Just this week actually was Scott Thornbury who did a book with us, an ebook. Uh, he did it for Amazon um, and it's been selling there and he's tried to redo it in Smashwords. Um, 
and he thought he could just push the file over, but they're insisting that it be reformatted certain things in certain ways. And he's become so frustrated that he says, okay, I just have to redo everything, sort of like put the whole thing right back into, um, uh, into sort of RTF or Times Roman 12-point font, no links, no formatting, and start all over. So it's something to bear in mind. Uh, I've just had Andre say Shelley's going to take the word after Lindsay, uh, or I'm not sure who is, but uh, I'm almost finished here. So just a couple of things, just reiterating my um, my points about that. Congratulating you on the work that you've done so far, and encouraging you to now um, get started. The design and the outline of something is always so much easier than actually doing that first chapter. And once you do that first chapter, things. Um, Sometimes it'll get complicated, and you'll have to redo that design and reorganize that design and so on. Um, so be prepared for that. Uh, the design will be constantly shifting. And if it's material for students, it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle. You'll find that as you've written one thing, you'll have to go back and put it earlier and slot it in before and so on and so forth. OK, I, I'm going to stop there, because I don't want to hog all of this, um, and uh, pass it over to who else is next. OK? Well, thank you, Lindsay. That was uh, really great information. And actually, that was really, um, I think, very helpful for many of the participants as well. And um, what I would recommend, as far as Lindsay said, with the Scott, uh, which I think is very, very valuable um, advice at this point, is I would put in a Google Doc. Um, that's what I've always done with mine, or if you're more comfortable uh, with, like, let's say, OpenOffice or Microsoft Word, you can do that. I think a Google Doc makes it easier to copy and paste because a lot of times um, the fonts and things like that are, are really messed up for Microsoft Word. So that's what I tend to do. So I think it's always important to have uh, a backup copy somewhere. Here's the point about the PDF. Okay, So PDF is one of the easiest forms, but I, I, it depends how you make your PDF. And, and that's been brought up. Uh, there's Sam Weeks, who um, is going to do the uh, Adobe Pro a version, and she's going to use that for a while. And one of our moderators, Debbie, uh, before she could even finish her book, it ran out. So then she had those um, frustrations. And so um, one of the tips I would recommend, I, I have pages. Um, that's how I developed my book. That's how I was able to do a lot with my PDF. So there's a lot of tools to make your PDF, and one of those tools is a Google Doc. So you could possibly do it on a Google Doc. You could do it on OpenOffice, which is a free open software. And the thing about Google and the thing about um, using any of these other tools, um, it, it, you got to consider the length of it. Um, so there's a lot of great ones out there. Glossy issue. So yeah, the My Maps, definitely tons of them. But there's also definitely tons of um, tools to make a PDF as well, and an ebook uh, that I found this week as well. Issue, all of these are really great tools um, that we would like you to use, but we would also like you to, um, to make a backup. So whatever you do, copy, paste somewhere else where it's going to be really easy. And like I said, I really think that um, Google Docs is really good for that. So that would be my highest recommendation. Um, I want to show you a couple of things before we move on to Andre, who's going to talk a little about this week, and then he's going to have, he's got this really great Prezi um, to show you as well. But one of the things he has as well is he's going to talk to you about um, iBooks. And he is fantastic with iBooks. He can answer a lot of your concerns. And iBooks, if you do have that option and it's available to your students, then you should consider it because it's one of the easiest ways to make a, a, a book as well. So that is one of the things that I think is really good as well. Um, what I want to show you, um, well, first let me have Jake say a few things. And then after Jake says a few things, um, then I'll uh, go ahead and he'll um, open the presentation and stuff from there. So, Jake, you can talk. Well, I don't know how much uh, I have to say. I just wanted to echo everything that uh, Lindsay, I felt like Lindsay really said everything that I observed, too. Um, I'm still screen sharing. I'm going to take that off real quick. Uh, but, yes, uh, I, I loved the, the talk going on about uh, all of the different options, but really uh, I think that so many people agreed to, to come back to, to PDF uh, basically and then be able to share to all of those other different tools as well that they could always start from that. 
<clears throat> I really liked uh, the conversation around the tips that uh, everybody sort of offered and how so many people agreed with uh, with your tip on on thinking about what the students are really going to come it always coming back down to, to what the students are going to access with how are they going to do it what do they have available and to keep that in mind first I thought that was a great tip as well as Lindsay's uh, making sure that you'd have even uh, the text to be able to work with to add to all those others uh, those other media so you have PDF or you have text to do that too so I thought that those were just great ideas and uh, I really was uh, <clears throat> surprised to learn about a couple of the different mind mapping tools also so there really were some great ones. Uh, um, I think uh, Lucia and Esther used uh, an actual used Google Draw, and I thought that they did a, just a fantastic job on that, collaborating on that. Uh, I think that, that that one might have been a, a little bit more difficult, but the collaboration, I think, that worked really difficult to, to create by using all of the, uh, the stuff rather than all of those other tools like MindMeister and things like that. But I thought that that was just fantastic that they were working on that collaboratively, and they just they, everybody everybody seemed to have done a really great job on mapping it out. And uh, I just there are an awful lot of tools out there for publication, so it was difficult to still just for, for many people to still choose. So uh, I thought it was just a, a fantastic week. I enjoyed getting to read through uh, everybody's looking through everybody's mind maps, reading through the, the, the outlines that were still being, that were being posted. I really just enjoyed it. So I learned a lot, and uh, I'm glad I got to, to be a part and to, to go see everybody's everything that they've submitted. So I thought it was fantastic. Well, thank you, Jake. And so now we're going to go and we're going to go back to, in, to um, the presentation. Now we're going to open it. But um, I did want to say uh, what Jake said about um, the audience. Um, your students, you know your students best. And so the ultimate decision should be based on your students. I want you, I don't know if you saw when I updated, uh, I put a status on our Google, and it said to take a moment and just become your student. Put yourself, imagine you're one of your students, uh, maybe even your most, you know, um, difficult ones to engage, and, and walk yourself through the book you're about to make, okay? So yeah, maybe the content, uh, they're not excited to learn English or something like that, but put yourself in the student's shoes. What would be different? You know, when they open the book, and there was a few questions there, uh, when they approach the book, what is the first thing they're going to think, you know? Um, it, it, what's going to get to them? Is it going to be easy to read? Is it going to be visually pleasing? Is it going to be something they're curious about? So they don't, uh, that's what we want to get them to do, to be curious, to open and explore. And that's why in the first week we showed you a lot of Jason Renshaw. It's very easy uh, visual elements and visual designs to make that come about so you don't have to use a tool. Once you use a tool, once you decide to integrate video, once you decide to integrate um, photo peach or anything like that, it's going to become more difficult. So at this point in stage, we want you to do the first chapter, and then you can come back and um, you can come back and you can always do these things um, as well. Um, but for right now, you're doing the first half of your chapter one. So I'm going to go over really quick the points. I'm going to try and screen share here. So hopefully that works. And then uh, Jake's going to come up and take over the screen share um, options. So let me go ahead and take my video off because that might make it better. Let's see. Okay, so let's try these. No, it's not going to do it, of course. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to go to Andres really quick, and then we'll come. <laughs> Andres going to give you an overview of week four and talk a little about this week as well, and then we'll come back and uh, show you the rest of the presentation stuff from week three. How about that? So, Andre, <laughs> it's <Okay>. all you. <laughs> I can do that, okay. So hi everybody, uh, again from Cologne, uh, Germany, and um, well, um, those guys said uh, very much about your work, and I can uh, still uh, say to you just to go on with your writing and with your producing, it's really nice, and uh, don't worry too much, because I think it's important like uh, if you if you write something just to to move on and and leave some maybe some parts leave it open because you you also have uh, Creative Commons licenses so you have always the option 
uh, for somebody else to fix stuff which is not uh, already perfect. But if your book is already like perfect made, nobody can add something to it. So keep that in mind. And now I'm uh, going to share my presentation uh, to you. Okay. Which will not work. <laughs> Okay, is that, I think it's plugged or something. Hmm. Yes, I, I, I'm not really sure myself why it does these things. <laughs> Sorry, because, guys. Because so before, <laughs> before I was uh, um, speaking, I tried it out and it worked, and now it's not working. Oh, you know what you should do? Um, X out that Google control what, that has your name on the bottom because that's what I found last time. When I X that out, it let me screen share. Of course, I tried that trick again and it didn't. So. <laughs> okay. hmm. That's strange. Oh, I think uh, Jake says that he can get your Prezi. Okay. Yes. If he wants, if he can run it, uh, that will be fine to me. I don't know because I had I, I had it on before when you were talking. Um, you know where it says your your name? Take out that one. I think it it's called Control Room. X out that app, and then see if it lets you do it. And if not, um, Jake has his. He has your Prezi. Yeah, if he wants to run it, you know, because then we save time. Okay, so. <laughs> I, I just uh, do it from here. It's fine to me. Um, so the president says, engage me. And uh, if you can just flip one ahead, Jake. Uh, it's like um, I picked up the, the topic for the week number four. And it's assisted technology and design to engage and support students. And um, yes, so I put a lot of tools and, and designs uh, into this Brazi and I also collected it on a side in, in my wiki and when you go one uh, slide more and then you can um, see the hyperlink to the wiki and um, I can also post it in the community after that. There you can find all the tools and, and apps uh, that I'm talking about. So next please. Um, so this is me in person. I'm a teacher in uh, Cologne at a, a high school, a secondary school actually, and I teach religion and music. And I uh, have an iPad project. Then yesterday was actually three years. We had birthday, and uh, so I have a lot of experience with mobile learning and also with iBook author, like uh, Shelley already said. So, and you can follow me and, and you can write me um, under my uh, Twitter handle, it's Tasten Spieler. So next, please. Um, yes, uh, in this circle, I, I think it's important, uh, and that's because I wrote it down, the four C's of 21st century skills. I actually found that on, on Twitter where I, I learned a lot, and uh, if you step one more, it's like uh, the first one is collaboration, and um, that's what you already do in the community, and the next one <laughs> is communication, and uh, um, that's what you do in the MOOC and what's very important, and uh, even if you like use technology, uh, uh, you, you find better ways to get the community network and to to upscale the communication. And the next one is critical thinking. It's like uh, if you produce stuff, actually like if you produce a book, you have to read a lot, of, you have to read a lot of sources and you have always to be critical. And if you um, tell your students in your book to um, like for uh, to do different tasks and uh, solutions, they always have to be critical. So you can include those uh, three C's very good into your book. But the most important is now coming up is uh, um, creativity. And uh, that's because I wrote it a little 
bit bigger than the other ones, and um, you see like you, you see video and pictures and painting and music and interview and of course technology. One more, <laughs> and um, yes. So um, first, um, I just um, listed some tools, some web tools for audio and video. And in the first circle, uh, is uh, you can see two tools uh, for recording audio. And the first one I'm using a lot is uh, called Audio Boo. It's actually it's a web tool, and you also have um, um, apps for uh, devices, for mobile devices, and the second one is uh, SoundCloud, which is also a platform for music. So both platforms are uh, pretty nice, pretty decent working, and you have apps for it, and you can, uh, for, uh, for um, example, you can include it in the book, and can, like, a, um, for a task, you can tell the students, do an interview using Audioboo and publish uh, the link into a, uh, into a wiki site or on a blog. And um, also, if you include um, videos or uh, spoken text, you can use Creative Commons, which we see now. And when, when you go one more, you can see the Creative Commons mixture. Uh, which is really cool. It's on the Creative Commons side, and you find a lot of uh, uh, Creative Commons music and sound clips and vocals, a cappellas. So if you like, for example, if you have a story in your book with pictures and you need music, you can find a lot of stuff there, and it's all Creative Commons, so you can use it. And if you go to the next uh, slide, you can also see um, uh, like you can uh, search the mixer, uh, you can search in genres, and you can search instruments and styles. So you can en enhance your ebook very good with those uh, sources and with those uh, with this music. And also you can uh, tell your students if they like um, uh, record music as a task or if they create rap or whatever, they can upload it there, and other people can use it. Okay, in the next slide, um, we'll show you one more source. It's the FMA, Free Music Archive, where, where you can find a lot of uh, produced songs. So now let's step on to video. Um, okay, in the video circle, you see the popcorn maker, which uh, a lot of you already tried for their three to one proposals. And it's really cool because it's a web-based tool, and um, you can, like, for example, you can load in uh, YouTube videos, and you can tag them with links and text. So that's a good task. For example, if you like uh, give a, a YouTube video to to your students, and which is included as a link in your ebook or in your PDF, and they, uh, as a task, load it into the popcorn maker and add some text or different stuff so they can learn things, they can learn vocabulary and what else, and they can uh, create movies and they can share it and peer review it. This is not a very nice tool. Okay, and the next one is of course um, YouTube, which I can strongly recommend. And um, there's one important thing uh, most people don't know about YouTube. Um, if you for example, do flip classroom for your ebook, or you you like record a little sequence where you explain something, uh, text, or you 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 write something to the blackboard, and uh, you you take that uh, to a video and you upload it to YouTube. Uh, YouTube will automatically save it with a standard YouTube license. So that means that nobody else can remix your video. But if you want that uh, your video is remixable, you have to uh, manually select the Creative Commons license uh, during or after the, the upload. You can always change it. And then your YouTube video can be remixed and reused. And if you go to YouTube Creative Commons, you find a lot of Creative Commons videos. Uh, for example, I just opened uh, the view on this slide where you can uh, find a lot of videos uh, that your students can remix. Uh, as a task um, to learn something out of that. 
Okay, so that was video, and then we move on to the next circle. Well, Jake is doing a great job. Now you see the camera, and um, in the lens of the camera, if you move one uh, uh, further, you can see uh, three of my favorite platforms where I find and upload uh, pictures. And the first one is Flickr, and the second one is Wikimedia Commons, and the third one is Instagram. Um, and uh, I uh, actually wrote find and upload. So if you have pictures, please upload your pictures also to those platforms so that other people can use it. And also you can, for a task, uh, um, for example, you can include into your book that the class should um, build a, a, a class Instagram page or a, a page on Flickr where they, um, where they store pictures to um, a topic, to a special, specific topic. That's a nice task and it's a lot of fun. And also what, what's a good idea is what I often do with my students is like download um, from Instagram, download uh, pictures to uh, one specific hashtag and then create a movie out of those pictures. It's a very nice um, uh, task. So next one, please. Um, Yes, um, the next one is the communication and collaboration, uh, two C's uh, in one circle. And you see also, you, you see a lot of uh, social media tools uh, like Twitter and Facebook. You can include, if you want, you can like include a lesson uh, where uh, students should like uh, tweet uh, short sentences about a topic. It's a nice task, and you can include a Twitter wall into your ebook, like uh, with a link, for example, or actually as a widget if you use uh, um, different ebook formats. So, one step further, please. Um, I listed. Um, can I move on one more, please, Jake? Okay, I listed some examples which you already know. It's like Etherpad and Google Doc and um, um, blog and wiki and uh, a lot of you use more like for doing uh, um, uh, posters and infographic is also a nice tool and uh, also a nice idea uh, that the students work on and then the social networks and the next one please um, the next one is um, an example uh, like if you have um, um, an exercise in your book and then you can link that to a worksheet uh, wiki page where the students can work on, like they can collaborate in the wiki and they can do peer reviews uh, in the discussion pages. And what you see here is like uh, the wiki from my class, it's a media wiki, but um, also wiki spaces is a nice tip where you can get free, as a teacher you can get free wikis and you can handle a complete course in the wiki, it's very nice. And on the next uh, page, uh, you see a project uh, which I used for um, um, churches around my school where the students were working and they can include in the page, in the wiki page, they can include different media like video and Twitter wall and also um, on the bottom you see a Google map. Okay, and the next one is uh, just a traditional blogging platform. It's a, it's a, actually this is a WordPress blog for my class five, where they can post uh, little stories and collaborate on that, and uh, you can link the po the blog to your ebook texts, and uh, then they can work on in the net, uh, and like collaborating in the net uh, on a blog and comment there. And two blog platforms uh, which I can recommend is WordPress, which is Powerful, but maybe a little more complicated, and Tumblr, of course, which uh, most of the students already have and use, and they know it. Okay, and the next um, slide. Um, <laughs> uh, we see uh, the tool that we just use. Uh, it's Google Plus, and you can also like as a as an idea to work on, or uh, you can. Uh, tell the students that um, they produce uh, short Google Plus uh, interviews or like uh, news uh, broadcasts 
which is much fun, which I tried uh, in the last half year. I tried with my students, which you can see there. And we produce a weekly uh, Google Plus Hangout and about different topics. Now, we, we have a music class, and the students prepare uh, the topic from one week to the other, and then they uh, broadcast it live. Like, like this is my room where I teach. Uh, like uh, they broadcast it live uh, out of the room. Okay, so the next slide, please. Um, yes, um, this is a, actually a social platform. Is Vine? It's an app that you can get for uh, your mobile device, like an Android or iPhone, and you can uh, um, record very short videos, like seven seconds. You can also do that with in Instagram. It's a little bit longer. And uh, it's, a, it's a nice exercise if you tell, like a task, if you tell them they should uh, uh, record a, a short explanation video with Vine and post it uh, and, uh, to, to the blog or whatever or to the other pad. OK. Um, so that's about uh, collaboration. So um, let's come back to the four Cs. Uh, we have collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and creativity and now I give you some tools to uh, actually design uh, um, your ebook so we can see that in the next circle and um, as Shelley already told um, I'm using iBook author a lot to create books actually I create the books together with my students but you can also use that for your book it's working really nice and smooth. It's an easy, um, usable software, and it's free. Uh, the um, problem with it is it's only for uh, if you have a Mac, and it's only producing uh, a format. Then you can with use with all functions that you can use on the on an iPad. But there's a, uh, some workarounds that I wanted to tell you about. So if you go one uh, slide. Further, you can see the iBook author. OK, actually, this is, that's the app. You can download it. If you have a, a Mac, you can download it for free in the App Store onto your computer. And then uh, on the next slide, you can see um, uh, a book that I created. Uh, actually, the, the students created it all. Um, they designed the. The, the book cover, which you can see there. And uh, they created the content. And then we, you see on the next page, you see uh, four examples of uh, the um, pages in the book. Actually, those are the pages uh, on the iBook. And uh, you can also see on the right side, um, that we put some audio into it, and also uh, we recorded videos and put videos into the book, and we have like uh, keynote presentations and all kind of stuff. If you move on further, you can see the um, the edit view. Okay, and on the left side you see the different pages, and on top you see uh, different functions for iTunes Author. And uh, where, where you can see the arrow, where the arrow is, you, you see this uh, audio, like uh, those students recorded a song. And uh, they also included the text on the right side, the lyrics, and they included the audio. So if you have it on the iPad, you just um, push this uh, speaker, and then you can listen to the song. And on the next slide, you can um, see um, some information. Um, about the copyright, this is an important thing. If you publish your iBook to the uh, Apple Store and you want to have it under a Creative Commons license, you have to actually uh, include the license uh, as we did on the bottom of the page, and then uh, other people can remix it. Now, remixing means uh, they can, like, uh, uh, make screenshots, uh, but there's a workaround. If you don't sell your book uh, uh, through the iBook store, uh, um, but if you just publish it for free as we did, uh, then you can also uh, sell the original iBooks uh, uh, file uh, through a blog, which we also did, 
and you can also um, uh, publish the complete content wherever you want. You only have to be careful if you want to sell the book in the bookstore, then uh, it's a, a different. Uh, you cannot um, sell it on other platforms. That's the restriction that Apple makes. So if it's for free, you can just publish it wherever you want. And um, if it's uh, for sale, you just have to go to the bookstore. Um, uh, one workaround, uh, again, you can, you can export a PDF format which is also really nice and then you can give it to different uh, devices and you can also distribute the, to the PDF. So you have a little workaround with that platform to make it more open. Um, Andre, and this is with um, iBooks, you were saying you can make a PDF with the iBooks too? Yes, you can. Um, actually, if I can, I, I try later if I can share my screen because I have uh, in the browser, I have one page where you can see the blog where we uh, have the download for the original I, iBooks author file and also for the PDF. We just manage it through the Dropbox. And oh, on, on, on the other page I, I have open, uh, you can see the book in the Apple Bookstore, you know, and there's no. The, the only thing is uh, if you if you sell it to the bookstore, uh, then you have to be careful because then you you can't use different um, um, channels to distribute your book because then Apple will handle the selling and uh, then you have to be careful. But if you if you say okay, I publish it for free, non-commercial, and uh, the download is free, then you have all options. And now let me ask you something real quick. With the PDF, when you save it as PDF, does it still keep the widgets and all of that as part of the PDF, or yes. is it more static? Yes, uh, it's more static, but uh, there's okay. another workaround that we did. Um, actually, for example, we included YouTube videos in the book, and we also included uh, um, widgets in the book, and we included web pages and all kinds of stuff. And uh, then um, having in mind that the PDF will be more static, we just included a link to the YouTube video underneath the video and a link to the widget underneath the widget. And so if uh, somebody uses the PDF, he just clicks on the link and then it, it's just instantly uh, going to the web page or to the video or whatever. So it's like an enhanced PDF if you want to call it like that, you know. And so you can also uh, see the videos, but you can see the videos in the PDF, uh, which is clear. But then uh, it's it's okay to to use. Oh, thank you. That, that thank you. That's very useful information. Okay, I'll let you continue. Sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. Uh, if you move one slide uh, uh, further, you can see the the widgets a, a bit larger. Uh, yeah, this 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 is the widgets that are included in the book, which are really cool. Uh, you see like uh, you can uh, have a picture gallery and you have different media like videos and you can uh, Wiederholung, it's actually it's in German, Wiederholung means, means repetition at the end of a chapter. You can uh, let the students repeat uh, uh, what they learned in the, in the chapter. And if you have a, a PowerPoint or keynote presentation, you can include the complete presentation really easy. Just drop it into uh, the book and, and then it's in. And you have interactive pictures and 3D uh, pictures and all kind of stuff which makes a really nice book. And uh, the, the, the biggest widget is the HTML widget uh, where you can include HTML code. And um, I found... Um, uh, actually, a friend of mine tweeted me a link to a, a page where you can find really cool widgets to include into iBook Author. And it's on the, the bottom of the page. Uh, um, it's called the bookery.com widgets. And there you can find HTML widgets and just drop it into your iBook. And it's there. And um, it's really cool uh, stuff, so you can include Twitter walls and, and different kind of stuff. Okay, so next one. Okay, now let's get rid of the next one, please. <laughs> um, yes, now um, 
let's leave iBooks Author. This is an app for um, uh, the iPad, actually. I don't know if it's available for Android, but I mean, uh, there are other uh, book creator apps for Android, of course. And uh, if you have an iPad class or uh, whatever, you can use the Creative Book Builder. And there's another uh, nice app we talked about in the community. It's the Book Creator. It's also very nice. And um, if, you, if you move uh, one uh, slide to the next slide, please, uh, you can see you can include media, like actually my students recorded a little audio and they included pictures. And uh, you can design uh, the complete book on the iPad. So if you like now for ebook ebook, create a book, you, and have an iPad, just uh, get the Creative Book Builder and uh, create the book on your iPad. And the nice thing about the Creative Book Builder, you can, um, um, as you see on the right side, you can create e EPUB format. So it's an, uh, an format which every uh, reader can load and display. So it's an open e electronic book format. And also you can export it as a PDF. OK, on the next slide, I think there's a, it's a, just a different um, view. Yeah, now you see an included video, which you actually can record uh, with the iPad just right into the book. It's really nice. And also, if you want to um, include pictures into your book, uh, you can search in the app. You can search Flickr and Creative Commons videos and include them. Also, with complete copyrights and everything is there, so you are completely set. Okay, on the next. Um, once more, we go back to the very important four Cs of 21st century skills. And uh, um, one very important thing uh, is uh, actually that we didn't mention, if you move one further, um, which a very smart guy said, is uh, play is the highest form of research. And um, that's also the, the last circle we, we move now. Uh, it's about gaming um, and about like uh, what we call badges. So uh, to, uh, to engage students to move on, that they uh, go to the next level <laughs> or that they get uh, some recognition at the end of the of a task, uh, like in form of a badge. So if you move to the next slide, you can see a very nice platform, which I already mentioned in the community. And it's uh, actually, it's it's programmed, I think, in, the, in Swiss, but it's in all languages. You can flip languages on top, on the top right, and it's called Learning Apps Org. And um, um, you can uh, program your own apps really easy. It's not like you, you don't need much time to program an app. Or you can uh, let the students program apps there. Like at, in your book, you can link to the site. And you can say, program, uh, read the text, and then program an app to, um, to, get the, to get the text remembered or to do a test. So if you on the next slide, you can see uh, what I'm talking about. Um, like there's uh, uh, different um, categories where you can pre-select. Uh, um, you, <laughs> no, you can pre-select different kind of apps, and then you can fill them with content. Like you can select uh, an app for assignment, or for writing, or for multiplaying, or tools, and then it's like a, um, uh, an empty app, and then you put your content and your pictures in. It's really nice. Uh, I actually um, uh, spoke to the guy who, who runs the platform, because I, I thought it, it would be great if you can include it into iBooks Author, which is not working right now. Uh, but uh, you can link to it, at least. And maybe um, you, you never know. In a couple of months, you can also include it into, into iBooks Author or into your ebook. OK, and on the next slide, um, uh, we come to badges. Uh, so um, it's like a, a kind of um, a feedback for your students. And they can show what skills they earned 
uh, in the lessons or in the lectures of the book. And there's one site uh, called Class Badges where you can uh, create uh, and you can also distribute uh, badges to your students. And the other side on the next slide is from Mozilla, which I can strongly recommend. It's uh, Mozilla Badges and um, it's an open source and you can uh, create and distribute badges and the students can collect them to their so-called backpack and uh, then they can show in the web, they can show what kind of badges they have. Okay, so next slide uh, shows you a friend of mine <laughs> and he's a really, he's an, an, a maker, uh, he makes uh, open educational resources and he also makes badges and um, he created um, three badges for our ebook Evo. So if you want to go badges, just use the badges and you can include them to your books and uh, students can earn them at the end of the chapter. So now, next slide you see uh, the first badge with, which he called um, the beginner badge and um, on you see you have a claim code for the badge and uh, you have a picture and you can add text to the badge and then you see who created the badge. But if you go to the platform badge.us, you can also create your own badges if you want. And then we, on the next slide we have the intermediate badge and on the, um, yes, you see the intermediate badge and on the first place we have the super user badge. <laughs> so uh, all those badges are actually linked in my wiki and uh, you can download them or you can include them to your book. Can you move on one more? Yeah, and I think Jake gets the super user badge for turning my complete breezy so nice and smoothly <laughs> and if you move on uh, one more I think um, we should leave the Prezi yeah that's my motto I included it again you know um, that's what I said at the beginning just keep it open don't be too perfect create something and share it with others that they can uh, enhan enhance it okay thanks a lot uh, actually uh, the um, title of my Prezi, Engage Me, I got from a movie which I also included in the Prezi, but I think I, um, I used all the time. Uh, maybe you can uh, watch the movie uh, later on, it's really nice, showing students um, and uh, showing what different media they use and how the reality is in school. And uh, here you all, you have uh, my um, contact again, and my Prezi also, you can reuse it. It's, it's, it's a Creative Commons Prezi. You can remix it uh, to your needs. Thanks a lot. Andre, um, Debbie had a question. Uh, some of the people in the audience, they want to know whether or not you could have clickable links. If I what? I, I didn't get that. Clickable if you could have um, images that you that are clickable in uh, in iBooks. Yes, of course. You can you can uh, include clickable uh, images. Um, and clickable widgets, and um, you have to do. You have to select the the, the picture, and then uh, you get different options. Um, on the yeah, I I wish I could share my screen, you know, because I could show it, but it's <laughs> I don't know why it's not working. Well, it's okay. We can encourage them to go and play. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, sure. And I can uh, I can also um, do um, two or three screenshots during the week, and then I can uh, show where you have to click and what you have to type uh, to get clickable uh, pictures and stuff like that. You know. Oh, thank you. That'll be really helpful. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Um, and 
Oh, well, I could share my screen a little bit, but now it's not letting me again. Ah! Oh, this is so frustrating when it doesn't let you do these things. <laughs> okay, so back to, it was letting me for a while. I don't know why it's not so. Okay. <laughs> well, Jake's going to go ahead and he's going to go back. Um, Jake, can you just forward it to the week three, oh, where it says week three moderators, please? And thank you so much, Andre. Andre was very, very, very helpful. So um, thanks You're for that. Uh, uh, turn it some more. Uh, turn it again and again. Okay, so um, I just really want to go really quick over the week three missions and then week four. So week three missions, you were supposed to map out your chapter. And you might think, uh, why after outlining your book? Um, Steve Jobs, when he was, I was reading the presentations of Steve Jobs, and I like to read a lot about different people who accomplished their goals. And as you know, I'm a goal, very goal-oriented and accomplish a lot of things, um, I believe. So... When you map out your chapter, it's a way to visualize what you're doing. So now you can take the different elements of your chapters um, that you mapped out because now you have those, and now you just put in your, your book, um, your chapter one. You only have to have half of your chapter um, done. We had a discussion on, well, now it's uh, author's tips, uh, as Teresa had us uh, point out. That's more positive, so we did change it to that, but it's the same address and um, a lot of you really enjoyed Lindsay's tips um, and you really enjoyed um, Terry's tips and Debbie's as well and I think all of those were really good um, you can do a lot with a PDF and this is the reason why um, a lot of the tools that you work with if you save it as a PDF, it'll be accessible to anyone. So whether you're using iBooks, whether you're using um, Google Docs, whether you're using Pages, whatever uh, Adobe Pro, once you save it as a PDF, then it's accessible to anyone offline to choose. Um, so that's that's really important. And we analyze different publishing options, and I know some of you are still deciding which ones, so we'll talk about that uh, next. So um, as we go on to week four, and these were the, um, the author tips and stuff next, um, so you can go back and you can see a few of those as well. Um, hopefully you were able to see Lindsay Klonsfeld's video, and we were really, really excited to have Lindsay this week. Lindsay is one of the best known um, um, textbook writers out there for English language teachers. He sold in lots, hundreds of countries. Uh, <laughs> he's created ebooks, and now he has his own e-publishing company with Luke Metting. So um, it's really quite an honor. He is one of the busiest people I know. He, he His books, he's done Macmillan's Global. He's done so many amazing uh, Delta. Uh, just to have him is a really great honor for him to look at some of your work. So really thank Lindsay here. Um, he's one of the busiest guys I know, so it's wonderful that he took the time uh, to be with us this week. And he has a lot of great experience, and, and, and so I hope you take some of that into heart as well. Um, and he won. Uh, he actually got to go to. Uh, he won a. Won, his books have won lots of awards, but I remember him getting one from the Duke. So uh, he. So it, it's quite an honor to have him. Uh, continue, Jake. Uh, but that's what we wanted to do with this uh, particular uh, session is we wanted to get you with those who um, have been in the business who can really offer help. And so this week, your four, your week four moderators include uh, Sylvia Guinan, who in the past has given us some incredible uh, design options. Andre, who all of you said in the chat was amazing. So Andre, if you go to our chat on the wiki, you'll see how everyone just loved your presentation. Debbie, who has provided um, incredible 
incredible information and feedback. Um, even in the chat today, she was saying how iPages allows video, and I didn't know that. iPages is a really good option if you have a Mac. It's a great way to design your PDF. And Debbie said that if you um, save, if you put a YouTube video in there and you save it in your PDF for iPages, that it'll work out. One of the great things about iPages, it's it's very affordable. Um, the reason I chose to do it is because it allows me to put in an EPUB version. It allows me to save it also as a uh, Mobi version, which means that I don't have to really do uh, different formats because I use iPages. I can just save it in each of those, and it's going to work on a Kindle. It's going to work. So uh, it saves me a lot of time. I spent 15 US dollars on it. I don't know what it would be, and I think you do have to have a Mac. I could be wrong with that, and Debbie can correct me on that in the um, chat box. So um, it's really great to have Debbie with us. And then we have Jackie Gerstein. Jackie Gerstein has produced several books. Uh, she's one of the leaders in passion-based education and mobile learning. Um, I created a free ebook of mobile learning. I put it on Scribd. It's had over 40,000 um, views, which is amazing. But um, Jackie's has had, I don't know, maybe 75,000, and it's so incredible. It's a really fantastic a book of um, how to do mobile learning. So, and it's free. So Jackie has, uh, she's constantly producing material. So it's, she's incredibly busy. Um, and so it's really an honor to have Jackie with us this week. Um, and then of course we have our mentor, Rubina. So the most important part is complete part of chapter one. If you don't do anything else, that's all you have to do. Um, we would really like you to try in your part of chapter one to try an activity that engages learners. It doesn't have to be a web tool. You can use something like Jason's activities where you fill in a caption. Um, and something very simple like that. Lead them to a poll and then they can take a poll. It doesn't even have to be embedded inside your ebook. Um, it's, it, it's just a way for you to visually place things um, and it doesn't have to be a web tool once again. Um, you can, uh, um, another option is a design that supports learners. So a lot of us are language teachers. You can put something like um, a lot of the options, whatever tool you make, will have things where you can um, have it and then it'll, it'll show you a definition when you hover over the word or it'll give you synonyms or it'll read it out loud to you. So these are what we're talking about, design elements to support learners. And uh, Marissa, who's part of the chat, um, and she works with the disability um, options for students. And so um, she, she's a good source on that and resources for that. Um, Louis Bides, who's part of, I'll be putting his bookmarks and stuff. He's blind, um, author, and instructor. And he does a lot of iBooks uh, presentations. So I'll be sharing some presentations he's done and how he uses iBooks who has uh, built-in elements for students that are blind or um, have learning disabilities so um, that's something that we it's unoptional you don't have to do it another optional task which I think is really really important would be really great at this point after you complete part of your chapter one whether it be one activity whether you just do a word bank anything like that have a student or what would represent a student. So it doesn't even have to be one of your students, but somebody, a niece, a nephew, a cousin, a friend's daughter, something like that, who would be your typical student, who you're going to use this book with. and Or whether your student might even be a teacher, it might be another teacher, and have them go over your ebook. Um, it's a way to get a critical eye. It's a way to get some feedback, design questions for them, um, have a chat with them, do it over a Google Doc. You can even do like a Google survey and have them, um, and that's going to give you a lot of feedback on, you know, is it easy to navigate? Is it um, get you more engaged? Like, does it make you curious about exploring? Is it, is it user friendly? Is it something? Um, was it easy to upload in their, on their computer? So these are things you want to get feedback for. So next. Um, and then we saw Andre's presentation, which is really wonderful. And um, now I want to show you some tools really quick. I put inside the chat box um, some different ones for your students. 
Um, and so now I'm going to have Jake. Jake, can you go to um, can you go ahead and can you send it to? Can you click on one of the Google Doc links there and open it up? I'm going to send you uh, one of the most important documents you can get this week is the week four one, um, where it tells you about. I put them in the chat box, Jake. The links. So um, is the week four newsletter, um, and I've put that inside our Google Plus page. And that week four newsletter has all the links that I am going to be sharing with you. Uh, one of them is this publishing option. So when you go in these publishing options, these are the ones I recommend. I recommend you do things through a Google Doc. I think it's really, um, Google has a lot of tools. You can use the apps. That was You can go back to one of the videos that I shared in chat in week two and you can see you can add videos you can add, I mean you can add drawings you can add images you can add so many different things um, but one of the best options is you can save it offline and you can save it as a Microsoft Word or anything like that so it's long lasting you have your backup I have found it really easy to copy and paste from this particular from a Google Doc and it's it's gone on uh, my blogging a lot of times I'll blog through Google Docs and then I'll copy and paste it in my WordPress. Um, I have EduBlock, so it's it's worked for me. I copy and paste on Tumblr. I've copied and pasted it on a lot of different options, and it comes out great. Um, Google presentations. You can add YouTube videos and things like that on it as well. Um, so I recommend that as well. Live finders. A lot of you want to embed widgets. You want to embed voice threads and things like that. I really wish I could screen share because I really wanted to be able to show you uh, what Live Finders does. So what I might do later is I'll just do a hangout um, where I do one of those video tutorials this week. And one of the reasons why I want to do that is because Live Finders is a really good option for a lot of you. It does everything you want. It does your curation. Um, the thing is that you have to in order to embed the videos and for it to all be there, one of the things that you have to do is you have to work with the HTML instead. So I will be doing a Google on that. I think LiveBenders is really fantastic. It lets you curate as well. You can have a table of contents. This is one of the ideas. So I saw some of you wanted to use curation tools like Paperly and stuff. I want to get you to not do that. Um, and here's the reason why, because that's not an ebook um, or that's not a textbook. Um, and then I think it was uh, somebody asked um, at one point in time, what's the difference, Shelly, between a textbook and what's um, the difference between curating something? And I thought that was a really fantastic question to ask. And the reason why I think that's a, um, it was Christina Ribafe uh, Broda. Sorry, Christina, I'm not pronouncing that right. Here, here's the point. Um, there are things in a textbook that make it a textbook. For example, there are um, objectives that you have to teach for that chapter. There are, um, we're not looking to revolutionize. With your chapter, you're not, we're not looking to revolutionize the <laughs> e-textbook industry. What we're looking to do is to make it more engaging for your students. Your students still have to learn the same materials. They still have to take the same test. They, so we don't want it completely out of the box to where, at this point, to where they, they're not going to get the learning. The students are the most important. Um, so if you use something like, um, like a curation tool like Pinterest and uh, things like that, that's great. That will be fantastic to supplement your e-textbook. But as far as creating an e-textbook, it should have some of the elements that are within a textbook. For example, it should have a theme. It should have uh, objectives. Maybe they're not spelled out, but they're, they're something that you can your students can be guided. They know that what they're supposed to achieve by the end of the chapter. A table of contents. Um, that should be part of it as well. And if you can't make a table of contents, even if it looks completely different, I did a table of contents that looks like a mind map, but it gives an overview. It lets my students know, hey, this is an overview of where we're going within this book. Um, and so if it's just a curation tool, 
then it's not going to be a textbook. So um, that's something that I want you to really think about um, when you're doing this because a book has a, a beginning and an end. Yes, your students can come and they can contribute to it. Yes, it could have web tools. Yes, it could look like a mind map. Yes, it could have blank pages they can fill in. But at the end of your book, it was over something. Either it be travel English, either it be a cookbook, either it be business English, either it be English for engineers. It, it, it was an encompassing book. So if you just curate a lot of tools and they just are about any topic, then that's not a book. Um, so I just want to reiterate that because um, it's really important that we organize in a way that our pay our students know where to go. Feel free to use any tools to supplement. That's fine. I thought Isu and Glossy were really good options as well. I think that that's one of the options um, that I would take. But I would say please save it in a Google Doc or uh, some other thing uh, because that's going to make it to where when you do want to produce it on your Kindle or when you do want to produce it on something else, you don't have to do it. Um, Lindsay was talking about Scott where you have to redo it all over again because that can be very frustrating. So. Um, that's something to look forward to. Wix and Wibbly and Google Sites. I've seen people use that. The great thing about Wix and Wibbly, especially, is they have fantastic designs. You can make a table of contents there. Um, and they're beautiful. And the great thing about them is it can work as your site as well. Um, the other part is it comes out in mobile devices automatically. It's HTML5, so these are a lot of options student, I mean, teachers are using. These are internet options. And then the other thing that I would recommend, after you publish your PDF, um, Scribed is a free tool. That's what I've created my other two eBooks with. Um, I found it really useful and wonderful. The great thing about Scribed is if you put a PDF there, it's accessible to anyone. They can download it. You can get statistics of what they're reading, who's downloading it. But the other part of Scribed, um, it's just where you you upload your publish. So it's not something you create with. It's something that you upload at the end. You can even charge um, for your PDF there so that's a good option too um, and you can charge on other platforms too you don't just have to keep it through Scribe I believe uh, but the other things about Scribe that I really like um, in in um, uh, somebody asked this question as well if you want to add to your PDF that's the problem the only problem with the PDF is that you can't edit it um, you you actually have to have you can save it as that form. So when the good thing is that whatever you create your PDF in, if you update it, you can update the scribed link, and it's the same link. So it's just that you keep updating it. So it's a really wonderful option um, because you're not committed to having that PDF there and not being able to re-edit it. You can keep revising it and keep updating that link and it's not going to change the link so that's one thing to think about when you're uh, trying to put it somewhere available for your students um, and um, that's it so um, the other thing I wanted you to look at Lucia's and Teresa's I don't know if Jake can bring up that uh, particular one uh, document um, if he can that would be great uh, Lucia and Esther put one um, as well, they put a, a publishing tool options. I think it's a really great document. So um, that is something that I definitely think that you should see um, is is the week two documents that uh, Lucia put up there and Esther. Um, it has pros and cons of the different tools. Um, and so Jake, you can just put it in the last slide. That's fine. Oh well, there it is. It says read more. <laughs> so here we go. Jake's been wonderful. Thanks, Jake. You're our, our savior here with these the different tools. And that's it. Um, if you look at these elements of an e-textbook, it's great because they tested them all out. Um, and, and they give you, they talk about Udo. Um, I produced with Udo before. They talk about, they give you the building elements. Um, I think it's important. It's in our week four. So as long as you have the week four links, it gives you a chart of advantages and disadvantages. Um, of creating different types of e-textbook 
site. So and even goes over curation tools. So I really think that you um, this is a wonderful, a helpful chart. Um, and thanks to Lucy and Esther for bringing this um, and creating it for us. So um, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and um, let you go. Um, I guess I'll put my video back. So thank you so much uh, for attending. Hopefully this has been really particularly helpful for you. And um, thank you. Bye, everyone. Here, I'll get Rocky to say hi, your little team mascot here. So bye, everyone. Have a great Sunday, and we will see you through. <laughs>